All right, guys, it's Zach from Tour Level Golf, and I'm doing a video today to talk about how I set up my golf bag and how you can set up yours to actually set up for the courses you play and to hopefully give you the best bag set up so you can actually play well. A common problem that we see as golf instructors all the time is people having bag setups that have a lot of redundant clubs or leave a lot of gaps that make it really hard to hit certain numbers. So I'm gonna walk you through how I set up mine and why I set it up that way. So first off, actually starting with my bag, first off, I'm a golf instructor and I own tour level golf. So one of the big things is my bag, it's massive. I have the full size staff bag that TaylorMade does, um, has my name on it. Obviously that's just more being a pro thing and has the tour level golf logo. I have this because when I do walk, I use a push cart. So it still is a little bit annoying, but I do have my carry bag tucked over in the corner in case I carry that. But uh, that's just filled with my backups at the moment. But so starting with the bag, the reason why I decided to go with the really big one is one for marketing purposes, I could throw the big logo on it, but two, it has a ton of pocket space. That's why you see so many PJ Tour players carry them. It's for the pocket space for the caddies. So just wrong with that. That's why I have such a large, massive golf bag. So I'll start off with putter. So putter is obviously really important. I've played with the same style of putter for a very long time. I play with a Scotty Cameron Newport One. Um, I've always loved this shape. When I was contracted by Callaway for a long time, I played the Odyssey One. This fits that very, very well and very similar uh, shape. I have a kind of mid-sized thick grip on it. I don't like it, but I putt very well with it. So got to look at that for the time being. But throw that in there and move on to the wedge. This is probably the most boring part of the bag. So I play a very unusual wedge setup. So I play a 52 and a 58. So I live in North Carolina. Turf conditions here can be really wet when it's winter like this or very dry in the summer. So I go with a mid bounce on my lob wedge or my 58 degree because I really like that around the green. When it's wet, I have a little bit more bounce. If it's really dry, I play down near Pinehurst sometimes. Still gives me low enough bounce to clip it off of title wise. My 52 is a 12 degree bounce. I use that and like the higher bounce because honestly, I hit a lot fuller shots with the 52. The reason I don't do a gap wedge in my iron set is one, a blade iron set, which I have doesn't come with a gap wedge. Um, and I do use this around the green occasionally, just personally, not very much. And you'll notice I don't actually carry a sand wedge. So I have about a six degree gap between these, usually not advised. The reason I do it is because I carry an extra iron for a very specific uh, circumstance. And I'll actually get to that when I'm actually looking at the arms. But I had to eliminate a wedge. So what I did instead of a 52, 54, uh, or a 50, 54, 58, or a 52, 56, 60 setup, I merged the two. So that way I still have a lob wedge, still go all the way up to 58, still can have the 52 to gap to my pitching wedge, but I don't have to carry the sand wedge. Um, it does leave a little bit bigger gap. I have about a 20 to 22 yard gap in between the wedges on full shots, which is pretty big, but that was something I had to kind of accept in order to carry a three iron. Going into my iron set, pitching wedge through five iron, I play the Mizuno MP221s. I love these things. These things have been great. They're pretty much just as pure blade as you can imagine. Um, and I only go with them up to five iron because I'm not somebody who's overconfident and feels like hitting a bladed four iron is something I need to do. So I really like these. I have them cut down about a quarter inch short of standard. So my seven iron, for example, is 36 and three quarters inches. To me, I don't think it makes a massive difference being a quarter inch shorter, but that's the specs that I measure into. So I just went with it for the set. I do also have these in the uh, Project X LS 
6.5s or the extra sticks. I've loved these things so far this year. They have been really good. I have a lot of confidence with them. The short irons have been my struggle this year. I hit them well, but that has always been the area of my game that I have not done extremely well in. But I really like having a bladed short iron because I just feel it gives me a lot of spin. So going into a green, trying to hold certain subsections or back corners or front edges of greens, I feel like it gives me enough spin to do that. That's why I use a blade. I don't typically recommend it for most people during fittings when we when I was a uh, fitter for a long time, I think I've maybe fit one person to a blade and it was specifically because they asked me to. The whole point of a blade is to give a lot of spin and quote unquote control. If I hit a massive hook with this, I'm gonna hit a massive hook with a cavity back as well, but the spin a little bit more and do give me the ability to actually flight the ball a few different trajectories. So when they talk about workable, it refers more to up and down, not left and right, because face to path calculations are going to be the same regardless of left or right misses. So that's why I play the blade up through any iron that I wanna hit into a green and store with. The downside of a blade is you do have to always assume you will hit it fairly centered. Uh, I played professional golf for a few years on a lot of mini tours, and currently I am a uh, teaching professional, so to be honest, most of the time I do hit the face, so I do have that luxury to and use that. Going up through the bag, this is where it starts getting a little bit weirder. So when we look at kind of a split iron set. I split my set um, five and four. So the four iron and three iron I have are actually in the Mizuno 225, so a little bit thicker sole, a little bit larger face, a little bit bigger heel to toe. And the big thing for me was they were a lot hotter off the face because they have a slight cavity in them. The reason I do that is because I wanted a little bit bigger gap between my five iron and some of the longer clubs. When I tested the blade, I was hitting my five iron about 200 in the air, but only hitting the four iron about 210, 212. So I put this one in the bag and now I hit this one 220. So it gave me that little bit bigger gap to try and close some of the distances I had. And the three iron is the club that I would take out of the bag if I decided to put a sand wedge in. But for me, a lot of professional events, a lot of tournaments I've played in, will have a par three right around that 230 to 240 number or a lot of shots into par fives are around that number as well. And for me, that's a perfect three iron. I don't like trying to hit a soft five wood or two iron, so never felt comfortable with it. So this club is specifically for that 230, 240 distance. So I'll keep that in for sure. But like I said, that was the, I knew I needed that distance a lot and I kept seeing it on the course every single tournament I played in. So I kind of made that decision, hey, I'm gonna take out the sandwich to keep that in. Going up from there is when I'm kind of into longer clubs, and these are three clubs I I see taken out of a lot of people's bags, and I don't understand why. But going up from that, I have something that's an 18 degree loft. I say 18 degrees because for me that is this two iron. So I play a sim UDI. Two iron. I've had this thing in the bag for years. It is my favorite club I have. So it has a uh, 100 gram uh, diamond thump, uh, extra stiff hybrid shaft in it. Because to me, it effectively works as a hybrid. And I say 18 degree club because a three hybrid at around 18 degrees, a two iron at around 18 degrees, or a five wood around 18 degrees, they're all going to go about the same distance for me. They're just going to have very different trajectories. So I really like this because. I do not struggle to hit the ball high. If anything, I actually hit the ball too high. So I keep this in because I love to hit it off the tee. It's a safety club for me. And because I don't really struggle to hit the ball high, I can still hit this in a really long par fives or something like that. So this has always a, there's been a staple on my bag for a long time. Same grip as everything else. I mean, you might notice I actually changed the grip color as I go from blue in the irons to white in anything I typically hit off the tee. I just like doing that, it's a personal choice. Um, but yeah, I used to swap this in and out with the five wood. 
I just found over time that I never put the five wood in the bag, so I stopped doing that. And moving up from there, I have a Callaway Maverick three wood. Found the opportunity to test and get other three woods. However, I just never wanted them. This isn't a part of the bag that I hit that much. So it's just, once I found one I was really comfortable with, I stuck with it. It has an 80 uh, gram extra stiff road white shaft in it. It's the Maverick Sub-Zero at 15 degrees. I keep the heavier weight in the back of this one just to add a little bit more launch, a little bit more spin. It does go a little bit further. I've seen at least on, on a launch monitor when I put the weight forward, but that's not really what I need it for. I don't use this for distance. I use it to go high into par fives mainly. I don't actually hit it off the tee too often because I don't hit it a lot straighter than I hit driver. And if I really need to hit a tight fairway, I'll just hit two iron. Uh, unfortunate two iron for me goes about 260. This is about 275, 280 off the tee. So it does what it needs to do. It hits that number and I've just never had a big need to change it, really. It does have this little part on the face that actually rusted over time. This is from a batch prior to the official release when I was signed with Callaway. So a little bit rusty, you know, but I say it has character. Going from that, finally get to driver and this has always been for me the hardest part of my bag to fit because it's the club I have the least amount of confidence with. So I have this in a Cincy Ram X Flex, uh, same white black grips as everything else, but this is the Stealth Plus with the weight cranked all the way to the toe side. It's at 9 degrees. So my old driver, I used to play a Sim uh, 2, but I had to play that down at eight degrees. I had a little bit heavier shaft in it because it spun a lot more for me. I found that this one spins a little bit less than the Sim 2 did. So I was able to go up about a degree in loft, did a little bit more launch on it, and went to a slightly lighter shaft to also help that spin. Anytime shaft's a little bit lighter, spin tends to come up a little bit. I've loved this thing so far this year. I have the, do have the weight cranked all the way to the toe. Um, I tried to make this thing, you know, tip stiff, weight cranked at the toe. I'm trying to make this as fade bias as possible because my big misses are always left. I'd rather accidentally block it a little bit right than see it low hook on me. It's just always been a preference. So uh, I've loved it this year though. This thing for me carries around 290, totals around 300 to 310, depending on if I'm kind of going after it or not. But been a really good staple in the bag this year. And I loved it. So for me, that kind of makes up my bag. The reason why I talk about that a lot is, and kind of going through the whole makeup, is I try to eliminate all gaps in the set. So make sure I don't have any yardages that I don't feel comfortable hitting. I have everything from one yard off the green all the way up to 310 that I need to cover. So, okay. Do I have all those pieces covered? And that's why the three iron was really important to throw in. So why having that two iron was really important. And yes, I did have to make that sacrifice, making like a 110 yard shot a little bit more difficult. But for me, that just comes down to, okay, if I practice taking a lot more off that 52, I can kind of make up for that. So that was why I chose to set up the bag. So going from there, those are all the clubs like I said, eliminating the yardage gaps was the biggest thing. A few other extra things I keep in the bag. I keep a few alignment sticks in. So this is actually like a Hank Haney alignment stick that I got when I was actually in high school. This is a road reflector from Home Depot. Same length, same size, same everything. So they work. Uh, this one was $20 for two of them. This one was three bucks. So... Um, I've always been a big advocator of, if you want alignment sticks, just go to Home Depot or Lowe's. So, but I always keep two of them in there to have. And then I also like to keep an alignment stick cover just to throw over them. The reason I do that, um, 
one. I like color pop, but uh, it actually serves two other purposes for me. One, I do like if I take a head cover out of the bag, if I'm walking, I can throw a head cover right over it. But the other thing is if I throw my three wood in the bag, it doesn't scratch the top of it because I have scratched an old driver on an alignment stick just throwing it in the bag. So I always just keep that on so I don't scratch the top of my woods, especially because most woods or fairway woods drivers are carbon fiber on the top now. If you slam me on top of an alignment stick, you actually can crack it. So I try to avoid that. On that, I then also keep my towel, which does have my name and the PGA logo on it. On there, so I always take that, throw that directly over the alignment sticks, and it's out of the way of me grabbing any clubs, but I always have a towel in there. I used to keep two towels on, but I just found I never used the other towel, so I throw that on. And I don't attach it to the bag because if it's really muddy or something and I have to clean off a wedge in the middle of a fairway, it's really easy just to pull it off, clean something real quick. It has the hole in the middle of the towel. You just throw it and loop it back on. So going into the bag, one of the things I do like to keep in this front pocket that I can access pretty easily is my little bag of accessories that I keep. So this just has all my ball markers, different repair tools, everything like that, that I really ever need. I don't like them loose, just throwing them in a bag makes it pretty easy to keep track of. And then I also have my uh, neon orange Sharpie in there. So just something to mark the balls. Going into the other pockets of it, I do, I'm a little obsessive because I played so much tournament golf back in the day, but I always keep a wrench just in case something comes loose. I don't really tweak my equipment after I get fitted for it. Usually the first month I do, I might, but not too much. So, but I just keep it in there in case anything comes loose. Then I always keep a pack of uh, CR2 batteries. That's always really important because they are really hard to find. And if a rangefinder dies on you in the middle of a golf round, it's nice to actually have one to pop in there. So we're talking about rangefinder. I do have a really old Bushnell one. I say old because it is so old that it can't do a uh, slope. And that's really important because a lot of events I've played in won't let you use a rangefinder if it even has the ability to use slope. So not just that you can't turn it on or off, it can't even have that capability. So I have this one with a magnetic strap, it goes on there. So if I'm walking and I'm just pushing my bag on the cart, I can just throw it on one of my clubs and keep it there. Right now, this is actually my spare rangefinder. I actually have another rangefinder that I keep. It's that a little excessive, but I never, never want that situation in a tournament that I'm on the seventh hole and my rangefinder suddenly dies. To that point, I'm as good as out because in a lot of mini tour events, we don't have really accurate yardage books. We're not playing our courses that are marked extremely well. We don't have caddies. We have to figure out the yardage ourselves and we're not allowed to use GPS. We're not allowed to use our phones. Rangefinder without slopes is the only thing you can use to gauge distance. So it's always why I, I tend to carry two. This is the main one I use um, solely because it has the integrated magnet. So. Same thing, I can just clip it on when I'm walking or if I'm in a cart, just throw it on the side of the cart. Same pocket, I usually keep just whatever glove I'm using at the time. So, you know, I've got a spare one, I've got another one that's a little bit worn, but still perfectly fine. And then in these side pockets, I'll actually keep my other gloves. And in this main big pocket where the logo is, that's where I usually keep a spare jacket and the tripod that my camera's actually sitting on. Right now, like I said, I do a lot of filming while I'm on the golf course or short game areas for this channel. So that is just the main pocket I keep everything in. Besides that, most of the bed's pretty empty. I have a lot of the pockets. I have an umbrella holder. I have the massive side pockets. I just don't use them right now because it's not tournament season. I don't really have a need to. But uh, like I said, the bed more acts as a billboard and then has pockets in case I do decide to start competing and getting traveling. But that's my bag. I hope this answers any questions as far as 
why I keep everything in there and all the things that I do. But if you have any questions, feel free, reach out in the comments, reach out to us at Total Golf. We'll be happy to answer anything and give any feedback on how we can help set up the bags. Most of us were really experienced custom fitters for years, so we have a lot of work helping build golf bags for everybody. So thank you guys for watching, and hopefully uh, you can get your golf bag set for this year, and hopefully if you're missing anything, you can find something that works.